Well, welcome to my second video working with my new ShopBot desktop. In the first video, we set the machine up and uh, moved it into place, set it up, and uh, flattened the tabletop. Now we're going to do the first project. Uh, we're going to make a set of coasters. Uh, and uh, so we'll just go ahead and work through that uh, nice and slowly. Uh, first thing I want to show you is I got a new vacuum cleaner hooked up. It's a nice fine Turbo 3. It really has a lot of suction power. And it's, uh, I taped it onto the, uh, to the collar here and made a little uh, device to keep the hose from uh, flopping over and stressing this plastic. And it uh, seems to work very well. Uh, so we'll get, go ahead and get started. Here's a screenshot of the Partworks software that comes with the ShopBot. It's made by Vetric, and by the way, you can download tutorials from the Vetric website that shows you how to use this. But I've made one coaster uh, just the way I wanted it, and then uh, using the array function, I've copied in an array to make 10 coasters on my 8 inch by 24 inch piece of material. Now, the next uh, uh, part of the program uh, shows the three-dimensional uh, cutout. You can actually draw the tool pass and do uh, practice uh, cuts on the screen and you can see the uh, the four tabs that hold the uh, coasters to the substrate so they don't go uh, flying off uh, under the router's power and you can see all the detail and make sure that the uh, that the parts are going to look exactly like you want them to look. Uh, the next uh, part of the uh, program will show the uh, a little uh, isometric view so you can kind of get an idea of the thickness and uh, whether you uh, whether you like what you're seeing. While you're in Partworks you not only can see what the uh, finished piece will look like but you can also see the paths that the tool will take. That's what all these little lines on here show. Uh, it shows the, the tools uh, path that it's going to do from from part to part to make to make the cuts. Finally, I've taken the image of the toolpath and blown up just one of the coasters so you can see the detail. If you really look closely, you can see how each one of these little impressions is cut with multiple uh, runs of the tool so that you can, uh, you know, you can make your major cut and then do fine cuts uh, to, to really make a smooth surface. So it's very interesting and very helpful when you're setting this up to be able to see exactly what the tool will be doing. Okay, you've seen what the tool path looks like. Now let's go ahead and set up the machine. Our first cut is going to be using a V-bit and a quarter inch collet. So I want to make sure the collet's nice and clean. No sawdust in it. Install it into the, into the collet nut. And then go ahead and put the uh, bit in so it extends uh, fully up into the collet. Use my wrenches, one on the spindle, one on the collet nut, and just snug it up. No Gorilla Grip necessary. The rest of my bits away. Now the first thing I have to do before I do anything else is zero the Z-axis, and I'll go ahead and check the XY-axis too to make sure they're zeroed properly as well, because the ShopBot needs to know where the origin of the axis is. Go ahead and put my alligator clip. And uh, this project that I'm doing is using the table as the zero point. But for this particular operation, I want to start by doing an air cut. So I'm going to zero this to a higher point. I'm going to take my three eighths inch board and zero to that so that I can run the routine through an air cut and just make sure that it's moving properly without actually cutting anything. I go into my ShopBot software and do my Z, C2 uh, which is the zero Z axis to the zero plate 
It asks me if the plate's ready. I say yes. <laughs> Software reminds me to put my plate and the alligator clip away. And there I am. I'm zero, three eighths of an inch higher than what I'm actually going to need when I do the actual cut. And that way I can do an air cut and uh, not worry about damaging the, the table here. Okay, the next thing I want to do is zero to the Proximity switches, got a proximity switch here and here. So I'll do a C3 routine. zero to what I think is the actual zero point as well on the table and so we're ready to start. Now the tool path that I made I copied onto a flash drive and inserted the flash drive into my computer put the file into my computer that's how I'm transferring the files back and forth. Okay so we're all set up Let's go ahead and do, do the, uh, the air cut. First thing I got to do is load the part file. So I click on load the part file, go find that file. And then I get a screen that asks me if I like the, the data. I'm going to say yes. Now it's asking me to click OK. If I'm happy, you'll see it's cutting the part, but it's raised in the z-axis by the thickness of that board, so I'm not actually cutting into anything right now. Okay, now that the tool has stopped, it's done all the V carving, now it's asking me uh, to change out to the quarter inch uh, spiral uh, to do the actual cutouts of each coaster. And at this point, I change the tool and uh, continue on uh, after Z zeroing again. Uh, so now I think I'm happy with the air cut. Now it's time to go ahead and do the real cut. One of the most important things uh, to have when you're when you're doing this routing is good solid hold down of the material because this router really rocks and rolls and it could take your material and you know fling it off of the uh, surface here. Uh, there's lots of ways to do hold downs, clamps, backing, etc. In this case, I'm just going to use six screws. I put screws far outside of the cutting range. I've made uh, countersunk holes. I've got some screws here that uh, will go into the MDF. I've got these lines that I, I routed earlier to uh, show me exactly where the X and Y axis are so I can line this piece up on there. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you know you want to make sure your cuts are within the boundaries. And so we'll just go ahead and screw these on in. I'm doing six screws is because in case there's any little bit of bow in the board I want to bring it down nice and flat because 
these cuts are to, you know, thousands, they're measuring thousands of inches, so you don't want to start out with a board that's bowed way up. Okay, we've got the router uh, bit in. Uh, I've already zeroed to the table surface for the z-direction. I also checked this, the axis for the zeroing in the x-y direction as well. Uh, we're ready to go ahead and uh, load up and start our part file. The first things first, I want to go ahead and put the guards on. So I'll bring up the keypad so I can manually raise up. And then I can just snap my guard in place here. Now down by the magnets. Okay, now I'm going to load the part file, turn on the vacuum cleaner. Now the machine wants me to change the bit, so I'll go ahead and do that. So we can do the cutouts. And now after changing to a straight quarter inch uh, cut, cutter bit um, and re-zeroing the z-axis, we're going to go ahead and cut the coasters out. <laughs> Okay, now you can see each coaster with a little tab. And now I just take the utility knife and just nip the, the tabs. Well, I've taken each of these coasters and I went over to the uh, edge belt sander and you know, smoothed off the edges, put a little chamfer on top and bottom. Then I took some of my half pound shellac and went ahead and coated these. Of course shellac's not the finish you'd want to use for a coaster. I would have to put something like varnish or lacquer or oil on this because of the water resistance of shellac is, is not very great. But still you can see, you know, it's just pretty much straight off the machine. So, thank you for learning along with me as I learn how to use my new ShopBot desktop.